Sure. Yes. No. Uh, get commit. My new favorite thing is get add dash p to individually add the chunks to a single commit so they're all relevant. It's so cool. Document built-in help documentation. Don't you hate how when you print help you can't go to the section you want to see of help? Well, you can in Bonsai, at least by default. And if you want to, you can make your own help command. You don't have to use mine. So already there used generics a ton, and and I really love it. This this is probably the coolest thing right here. This function right here could not be done without generics. That's right. It could not be done with interfaces. It has to be done with generics. There's no other way to do it. And it's such a basic thing to have music. A lot of people, when they do co-working sessions, they'll go, they'll stop talking and they'll, and they'll turn their music on. Not me. I am going to be talking during that time and turning the music off. And in the reverse, when I take a break, I'll put the music on and I may or may not be talking during that time or walking away from the computer. So that's how it works. Create a file and directory name completer which is the default in most uh, shell script applications, which does completion. Uh, but ours is going to be better because it's going to allow you to do things more precisely than the built-in default in most shells. And let me tell you what I mean by that. You know, tab your way through there, you know, to get to the, what you want. You like no, recognize that you run out of tabs eventually and it starts to default to, to showing you file system things, even though the files are not valid arguments at that point in the command. And this is one of the greatest pet peeves of my existence. I'm going to banish to make it so that every command in the subtree, in the Banzai subtree, has to be explicitly set. There's no default completer. If you don't set a completer, it won't complete. It won't put something there, but you can still have powerful completers if you want them. This is one example of generics that, that we've been using. Um, I can show you that really quick, I think. Uh, filter, map, here we go. So here it is. You can't do this code without generics and go. And get good contact with my lips before I take a drip out of it. But if you, but if you're like at all lazy in your drinking habits, which I am, <laughs> it'll all end up on your shirt because it'll break the seal and it'll go down. <laughs> That's cool. During break, we need to look at that closer. This is really cool. It's what I've been telling people. This is more important than your website. Seriously, making making a, a really strong GitHub landing page is way more important than a website, in my opinion. Unless you're a web dev. The skill stack stuff, and I found our old um, site, rdbixrob.github.io slash vi-help. This was, you can print it. There's a PDF down here, and that has uh, the cheat sheet that I used to print out for people and have them put next to their monitor so they could learn VI. It's, about, it's available for free out there. You can go download it. I've just hit this single most annoying, idiotic, moronic, stupid design decision the Go team has ever made. And I'm going to rant about this. This is going to be a long one because I am so pissed off that this exists. This is so fucking stupid. Watch. Watch what this evaluates to. This is the caller, right? The caller has a value. It's an interface. The caller is nil, right? And here is what it contains. That's the type of reference it is. But here it says it's true. Nil, no, true. Which one is it? Who to knows? The fact that if you involve an interface, which everybody tells you to do and go, do interfaces, as soon as you involve an interface, a simple check against whether that thing has been defined will return uh, false. So you can't tell whether it's nil and your code Ooh, the panic. fuck up because of this. The only way to fix this is to use fucking reflection, this shitty ass reflection, in order to get the code to work correctly. And I'll show you, I'll change this other line up here so you can see the value that comes out of that. Here's the code that works the way we want it to. As you can see, it's not reflect value of is null, and now it's false. But we had to actually jump out of go and use reflection. We might as well have used Python at that point because we've incurred such a huge performance hit, not to mention how non-idiomatic so it is. This kind of shit just really pisses me off because there are probably thousands of people out there using if interface that equals nil and they are failing because it's not catching it. It's fucking terrifying. Watch out for this one. Regularly using the length of arguments as a check for an empty slice. Uh, 
And that is the safe way to do it. And I've been reminded today, I was tempted to try to do args equals nil, and I got burned really bad by that because args equals nil was false, uh, even though it was Read zero. condition where we had an empty slice. Um, and it the equals nil did not pass. So just to be safe, always check the length of arguments. Then no matter what state the slice is in, you'll get what you expect. Comparing against nil is always dangerous.